So a viewer asked, would Megan become a political candidate? So that's what this video will be about. And if you like the video, I hope you do like it. If you haven't subscribed, why haven't you subscribed? It's not difficult to do. Just go ahead and subscribe. Okay. And thank you very, very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Why would anyone who has an opportunity at wealth, I mean, the reasons is many politicians, there are some rich people who become politicians and that's just the power grab, I guess. But uh, sh let me see, I've made some notes here. Um, oh, journeys. You asked uh, about a seat in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I think you got the geography mixed up. Maybe you think in Pasadena, California, Pittsburgh is in Pennsylvania. That's the other side of the continent. So probably not. But um, I, I, you, you must have meant Pasadena. But why would she want to do that? She already has a star power on the back of Harry and what, and what she did as an actress. So she doesn't need that to uh, give her a wealth, a boost. Uh, that's already accounted for. And then also opening herself up to, because politicians today, I mean, we had a lovely a politician in Arizona who got shot in the head and is still not the same person and she was when it happened and that's 10 or 15 years ago maybe more than 15 years ago so yeah why would she uh, want to put herself in that sort of trouble politician no I think you need to think that through and then um, trying to win her adoration oh oh yeah whatever party you're a part of then you're trying to win the adoration of the other party and they're beating you down I just think it's a bunch of headaches it's a bunch of um, security issues that there's no reason why would she want to why she's got everything she's got the world by the tail now Okay, so the viewer, Journeys into the Light. Thank you, Journeys, for asking uh, the questions. Uh, will Meghan Markle become a political candidate, a seat in Pittsburgh, she presumes, or questions? And um, so we'll talk about that. Um, I already addressed it that, you know, I think probably you mean Pasadena. There's a, I mean, if you ask me to name a location of a prominent city in, in, in uh England other than London, uh, I might be pressed to do so. So probably she meant Pasadena, that's in California, Pittsburgh is on the East Coast in Pennsylvania. But does Megan have political ambitions? Well, let's meditate. That's all it takes. So let's see how this comes out. Does Megan have political ambitions? Very interesting. Maybe uh, political uh, ambitions are something different in the UK than they are here. Um, and so I probably don't have a clear frame of reference for why that question might be asked, perhaps. So, but I mean, if you've got everything going for you, um, and these folks are just starting out and encountering all the problems that they're having to get um, their lives going, then, uh, I don't think so. But will Megan, is she aspiring to some political ambitions? Let's do six cards. Okay. One, two, feel compelled to stay on the side. Three, four, five, and six. Does Megan have political ambitions? Let's see what we get for signifier card. For that. Does Megan have political ambitions? Okay, so the um, signifier card for this, again, like the uh, Monday's reading, is the Knight of Swords. Uh, Monday's, I think, was the Knight of Cups with the Knight of Swords in the past. This has the Knight of Swords right front and center. So, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. The Knight is the fighter for those things. So, this would indicate that this would be the focus uh, that she would have rather than, uh, or if, maybe that involves being a politician. I don't know, but the, the signifier card is the Knight of Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, Law. And this Knight is really charging in um, with a plan. The challenge to that is um, the Two of Swords. Again, same uh, d description for uh, Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. This is having to make a choice, and this card is described as peace in this deck. Peace. So that is pretty much along the uh, lines, I believe, of what uh, are some of the founding tenets of that Archwell found, uh, Foundation. 
So uh, truth, justice, rules, law, fighting for that is challenged by peace. The basis of this reading, then, is the hanged man. Okay, so the hanged man is a uh, stop. Take a break. Look at this from another uh, perspective. It can be painful to do that. This uh, hanged man almost looks crucified. If you notice right here, he's got a nail through his foot. And um, so this is... I th this could be significant of the place where that uh, family is right now, where they're just kind of in a bit of limbo as they get their feet uh, on the ground in this new life. Uh, the tr back, uh, the past of this reading is a fool. Well, this is exactly what I said. This is that new start. The fool is starting a new journey, getting uh, going. And um, so that's perfectly appropriate for there. And in the sky of this reading, we have the Wheel of Fortune. Again, very appropriate for this uh, couple because, um, you know, everything's... Uh, available. Anything can happen. But the Wheel of Fortune, for me, this speaks to they're trying to establish their fortune. That's in the sky. So I think that's foremost, trying to establish their security. Interesting. Okay. Now, we'll see what is the likely outcome of the first part of this. Does Megan have political aspirations? So far, this doesn't say that to me. Um, and, ah, so this is the Empress. The Empress is... Um, the third uh, card, uh, the third stop that the fool makes on his journey as uh, toward his uh, life. And the Empress is fruitful, all-knowing, has all the knowledge. And um, so I don't know. This doesn't really kind of address this question for me. I have such a small space to work on here, especially with trying to keep these cards on the, on the, um, on the scene and my picture over there. So... Um, Let's read it again before I pull some more cards. So, does Megan have political uh, aspirations is the question. Well, we start out with the signifier of a knight of swords. This is a fighter for truth, justice, rules, and law. That's the signifier. That's uh, what the focus is, I would say, uh, for this family. The um, challenge to it is peace. Makes a sense. You have to make a choice. You have to draw the line. You have to go one way or the other. And uh, so the challenge to fighting for this truth, justice, rules, and law is making peace. That sounds appropriate. The uh, base of this reading with the hangman is that things are in suspension. This family's fortunes and uh, goals, their plans are all in a in a in a process of semi limbo right now. And in in the uh, past of this reading with the fool, just really uh, reemphasizing that it's a new journey that we're starting on here. In the sky of this reading with the wheel of fortune, we're talking about you know this everything's a crapshoot. The wheel of fortune I always like to say is turning in a fortuitous direction. There can be difficult times uh, when you get down to the bottom of the wheel, but then you climb back up. So I would say. No, this is the beginning, uh, along with this uh, fool here, of uh, working on this this fortune. And then the likely outcome of the homecoming, the whole thing, is this empress, which is fruitful, which is passionate, which is all-knowing. So it looks like their life is on a track that is good. Doesn't really speak to whether she has political ambitions. So I'm going to do a quick shuffle, quick spread. And the signifier and the self of that question, Ace of Swords, again, a great big offer of truth, justice, rules, and law. You know, it's not ruling it out. Um, the um, environment that that's in, however, is um, Princess of Cups. So this is the, uh, let me see, the princess is equal to a page in this deck. And so there's very uh, little weight in the royal court, and cups are emotions. So... Seeking this truth and this justice, this rules and this law in a big way is challenged by a weak a princess of emotions. The hopes and the fears for this is the universe. This is the end of a cycle, the beginning of another cycle. It's amazing how the cards really are keeping up with the theme here. And uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? Do this like that. The final outcome, whether she has political aspirations is right here. Ah, this is the seven of coins, wondering if you've done enough, and this card is called failure. So I would say no. If that uh, option, I guess, when you weigh it out, represents too much of a risk, it's not gonna be something that uh, that they would go for. So I guess maybe everything's on the table, but they're very uh, risk averse, this couple, I would say. So, uh, those cards may have been a surprise, I don't know. Uh, tell me what you think, how your uh, intuition is coming along, and uh, what uh, those cards meant to you. And uh, if you got some comments about the current uh, format, let me know. I'm trying to experiment with it for about 14 days here, so we'll see how that turns out. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so these are the Toth Tarot deck, Alist Alistair Crowley, and these are from U.S. Game Systems. And uh, these cards 
are pretty amazing. Um, some like to use them if they've got kind of a severe uh, subject uh, that they think needs, uh, um, you know, a very direct uh, answer to them, in, in, uh, not a, a flowery answer. The guidebook is very useful, as a matter of fact. It's easy to read, and it's got some interesting uh, uh, information here on the um, author of the card and the painter of the cards and uh, with some uh, collaboration. So I'll just read this one little thing. This is by Lady Frida Harris, who actually painted these cards. And she says, Arthur Crowley's Toth Tarot Deck, the tarot could be described as God's picture book, or it could be likened to a celestial game of chess, the trumps being the pieces to be moved according to the law of their own order over a checkered board of the four elements. I love that. That's a very insightful way. If you think of the artist using that as her guiding light to designing the cards, that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, the cards themselves are are easy to read if you read the cards. In other words, if you don't impose your uh, predetermined notion of what a particular uh, card is supposed to mean, uh, like I often do, because I'm very much like the Rider Waite system, but these Toth cards are amazing. What happens here is that um, they tell you here in a, I don't know if you can see it, but in the background you see this tells you this is Wands, and of course this is the Prince of Wands, and then the um, the Major Arcana, they show them in the very faintly, you see here it says Trumps, and uh, then this tells you this is Art. So they're not exactly the same uh, order of divination as the Rider Waite system, but not far off. And if you take a minute to familiarize yourself with, the, with how they um, are ordered, then I think you'll be okay. And I'd just like to give you this chance to look at all these cards spread out in case you don't get a chance to see uh, a lot of tarot cards. Um, maybe you're thinking about buying some cards and this would help you make a decision for or against these. They're a little big, so they're awkward to use, but once you get used to them, then that's fine. Just like anything, once you get used to using them, um, you know, you acclimate yourself to the system. So this is the Aleister Crowley Toth deck. Love these cards, actually. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come, so ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.